in order to have good relationships, we have to realize that our loveless patterns could be your anger, your neediness, your controllingness, your whining, whatever it is you do, we all have the stuff we do. It's not about what form our obstruction and the walls before our hearts take. The issue is to identify them and realize that that's all they are. There's a quote from The Course in Miracles that I know you've probably seen on the internet attributed to Rumi, but it's not a Rumi quote. It's a Course in Miracles quote. And that is, your job is not to seek for love. Your job is to seek all the barriers you hold against its coming. You are already perfect love. The issue is that we've built up these walls in front of it. And the walls take the form of these character defects or these mental and emotional habit patterns that lead to behavior that keep love at bay. It, it, which is just another way of saying make people don't like you. Make people not want to be with you, not want to hire you, not want to work for you, not want to marry you, not want to love you, not want to be your friend. I mean, it's like a big deal. That's all that relationships are about. And we're responsible for paving the way of easy access to the flow. Easy. So we have to declutter it because God created us in such a way that you are me and I am you. I don't have to create intimacy. I just have to put my mind in the place where what could be more intimate than that we are each other. So when I'm in my natural state, not only do I naturally feel my love for you, but you know what? It feels good to you too. Time and space are part of the illusion. They're part of the three-dimensional miasma. Buddha called it an illusion. The Course in Miracles calls it an illusion. Einstein said that time and space are part of the illusion, albeit a persistent one. So once again, we're in this world, but the truth, the ultimate truth of who we are lies beyond this world. This world is like a veil in front of the world we want. One of the exercises in the Course is, beyond this world, there is a world I want. And that does go back to what is actually a quote from Rumi where he says, beyond all ideas of good and bad and right and wrong, there is a field, I'll meet you there. So the veil, the walls that keep us separate from each other are the thoughts of judgment. You're wrong. You're right. Good. Bad. So on the other side of that is the truth where we are one, and actually there is no time or space, so it's not like you're even over there. With my body's eyes, you appear to be over there and I'm over here, but in ultimate reality, there is no space any more than there's time. So... The idea is that, kind of like if you imagine the spokes of a wheel, and usually when we identify each other, we think, where is your position on the rim of the wheel? But actually, if you take each spoke to its central starting point, there's only one point from which every spoke emanates. You know, the Swiss psychologist Carl Jung said, if you go deep enough into your mind and deep enough into my mind, there are mental images or archetypes that we all share. But the idea of the Christ mind is one step lower, go deeper, which is if you go deep enough into your mind and deep enough into my mind, we're the same mind. That's the meaning of there's only one begotten son. So how much more intimate could we be than that we are each other? You don't have to create intimacy. You have to recognize, recognize the world in which we are one. Once again, not your job to seek for love, but to seek all the barriers you hold against its coming. And those barriers are in the form of our own judgments, our own thoughts. That's where the problem is, and that's where the solution lies. <laughs>